So in this video, I'm going to go through all the potential strategies that Mercedes could have used in Singapore and demonstrate to you that Mercedes was setting Lewis Hamilton up to lose. OK, there is no two ways about it. They were setting him up to lose. And that is sports manipulation. That's a crime. Before I do so, I need to show you how I'm going to do this. Now, Singapore, uh, the 2024 Singapore Grand Prix, I can't use the example on F1 TV. And the reason being, all that it is giving us at the moment is the highlights of the race. It's not giving me things such as data view, track of view, and so on and so forth. So, what I'm going to use as reference is a bit of history. Because in life, we should learn from the events of the past. We should see what has gone on and use the knowledge from that for future learning. So let's uh, have a look, shall we? Um, last year at Singapore, this was them forming the grid up. And we're aware that in Singapore, there are supposed to be safety cars. Every Singapore Grand Prix, there's been a safety car. Last year, Martin Brundle told us this. Yeah, so a quarter of the previous safety cars have been generated by the four corners that no longer exist on this track. and other... A quarter of the previous safety cars have been generated by corners that no longer exist. That was last year. This year, we're told more of those corners have been changed. Has this likely decreased the probability of a safety car? Hmm. When you are factoring in your strategy... Can you act, is it worth you factoring in your strategy on the grounds of a probable safety car that is going to come at an unknown time? Can you say that on average a safety car will happen on lap 20 on average, lap 50? On average, there is a safety car incident on lap 15. That's a ridiculous average. OK, a ridiculous average, because with that kind of average, you are saying there is likely to be an incident in this race which is going to be a safety incident generated and that is going to cause the FIA to deploy the safety car to deal with that incident. And on average, somebody is going to crash on lap 15. Ridiculous. OK, you cannot average when somebody is going to crash. Right. If they crash, they crash. You don't know what's going to cause that. Obviously, at the start, there's a greater probability on the grounds of lots of cars converging into a tight space, causing increased probability of a crash. But as that race then goes on, what is going to cause a crash? Is it going to be caused by a battle? One car attempting to overtake another car? Is that going to be caused by mechanical failure? Is it going to be caused by a driver losing concentration and clipping the wall? At what point in time does that happen? What point in time on average? See, you can't average that one. People want to say to me, oh, you like average. Yeah, I do like average because when we average out something like how long it takes to clear up an incident, that's a valid average. When you factor in the likelihood of a restart of a race based on here is an incident. Here is how long it will take to clear that incident. If there are lapped cars in play, here is how long it takes to clear an incident when you have to do the unlapping procedure. They're valid averages. But you can't say on average in a Formula One race, somebody crashes on lap 30. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So. What we knew from last year is that this Singapore track has been modified. Has that decreased the probability of an incident that requires safety car inter intervention? Highly likely. Why do you think they might have modified the track, boys and girls? What do you think the FIA's role is? Oh, the FIA, their role is to oversee the safe running of motorsport in accordance with the rules of motorsport. They don't do that because they're corrupt. OK, what they're doing, they're generate, they're manufacturing a show. They're being controlled by big money influence to manufacture a show. They are not complying with the rules of the sport. They're not penalising all of the competitors in a uniform manner. That causes controversy. That causes conflict. 
They like that conflict, not just the FIA, the creators of the show like the conflict, because when we are conflicting, when we are fighting each other, they are making money. That is what happens. Understand the dynamic. Know your enemy. Know your enemy. It's not me. I'm just explaining to you what things are. OK, I'm just saying, look at this. This is what is happening. If you don't like what I'm saying, analyse whether what I am saying actually holds water. Is it true? Who is saying the false information? Who is saying information that contradicts itself? Why would they do that? They're doing that to create conflict. Your enemy is the people that taught you to fight me. Understand that. Understand that. It's by design. I'm going to go through something again before I start the analysis of 2024 Singapore Grand Prix. Oh, before I do the uh, bit of a breakdown, I just want you to hear this. You can watch the action, and if you want to press your red button, you can also have an alternative commentary tonight. The F1 uh, kids are in action, Brayden, Scarlett and Zach, and I'm sure they're going to enjoy. If you want to be uh, hearing the commentary of what children think about this race to give you their valuable insight, you press the red button, because that's useful, isn't it? What is a wide open race here? Any one of the top five fancying their chances... Any one of the top five fancy their chances in a wide open race of Singapore? Any one of the top five? Safety cars come into the equation. So even outside of the top five, Martin, there are drivers thinking they can move up the grid here if they get the right tyres on at the right time. And avoid... If you get the right tyres on at the right time, then you can move up. Mm. What if you get the wrong tyres on at the wrong time? Does that mean you move down? Hmm, I wonder. Well, pitting at the wrong time. Yeah, so a quarter of the previous safety cars have been generated by the four corners that no longer exist on this track, and other corners are, are smoother and more grippy. Oh, so that should be that there's probably a lower probability of a safety car. But, of course, there are stages when the cars simply run into each other. Oh, but there are stages where the cars simply run into each other, Martin. Tell us other when they're on alternative strategy oh when when cars are on a different strategy cars just simply run into each other don't they martin he's with tires we'll see how they fare this evening and of course back in 20 we'll see how they fare this e this evening if they're on different strategies they may just simply run into each other <laughs> 2017 Ferrari lost both cars on the opening lap for the only time in the history of uh, that team, the illustrious history at which tonight's 1067th race. So, yeah, sometimes we have the crash at the start. So if we have a crash at the start. So this is one one option for the um, 2024 Singapore Grand Prix. We have a crash at the start. Then what? OK. We're going into turn one. We've had this short run down to turn one. There is a big coming together of vehicles. Crash. Now what? Well, two options. Either, well, if we've got to recover these cars and there's debris there, you've got to use a safety car or you're going to red flag the race. OK, safety car. What's going to happen? Oh, Lewis Hamilton is now on soft compound tyres. He can pit and can run to the end of the race on hard tyres. OK, right. So what has he done? He's sacrificed track position. He's gone into the pits. Everybody else stays out. And Lewis comes out in what? Let's say there's two cars crashed out of the race. Lewis has gone into the pits, changed his tyres, come back out. Nobody else has pitted because nobody else wants to run to the end of the race, do an entire 50, uh, 62 lap race on hard tyres. All right. But that was Mercedes Gamble. That was their wild card on the soft compound tyre, right? They wanted to do that. Hamilton's done that. He's now got to run the rest of the race conserving hard tyres for 62 laps. But he's come out in last position in that race. When that race gets started again, you get that natural spread. At the point in time, that safety car, if it's a safety car, you'll get a restart on the safety car. 
But as they're lapping behind that safety car, the gap between each car is half a second. If there are 18 cars in the race, the distance between first place and last place in that race is at least nine seconds. Just in that snake. There's a nine second gap between the first competitor and the last competitor crossing the start finish line. Just in that safety car snake. As soon as they get going, those gaps of a half second soon become a second and more. So the gap between first and last becomes 18 seconds very, very quickly. And with each lap, that distance between first and last starts increasing. And the, the guy in last has to make his way through the field and he has to pick his moments with which to make the overtakes. You can't just side through that field unless you've got a rocket ship of a car. You know, unless you can pedal that car as fast as Max Verstappen can. Right. So. You're, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. You're, you're losing seconds on the leaders straight away with that strategy. Poor strategy. Other option. Crash at the first corner. Oh, we're going to need to red flag this event. All right. So we did that in Monaco earlier this season. What did we, What happened? What happened? Oh, well, we didn't go through enough timing zones. So, all right. So that means that means what? That means that the grid is what it is. Let's say the crash had not been positions one and two. It wasn't Max Verstappen and Lando Norris. OK, um, and let's say at the start, Lewis Hamilton got a great launch off the line, uh, overtook them both, went into the lead. Uh, but back in 19th and 20th, the two um, stake, kick, Sauber, Aldi, Jonathan Wheatley, for fraudulent team, well, they're, they're, I don't want to do them a disservice yet, but they will become a fraudulent team by employing Jonathan Wheatley, which they have. Um, those two cars crash out. Oh, we're going to need to red flag that. What are we going to need to do? Well, they didn't go through enough timing zones. So when we reform the grid, uh, no, Lewis, although you did overtake them to get yourself into first position on those soft compound tyres, um, then we're going to reset the grid so that it's just the same starting grid as the original race. We we decided to throw the red flag before we'd gone through enough timing zones because we didn't want you to maintain the lead. We've seen this sort of thing happen and it happens at the whim of the FIA, depending on what it is that they want to engineer. Let's be clear about that. There's plenty of examples where we can show that this is what the FIA do. They manipulate things, they manufacture things, they don't comply with their own rules and they just manufacture what they want to happen or what they're being paid to make happen. So either way, what? You've got a red flag. Everybody can go into the pit lane. Everybody can change their tyres. So starting on the softs, what advantage is that giving you? Zero. Zero. So an early accident, what, what has that benefited you? How has that benefited you? It hasn't. It hasn't. So you're gambling on an early incident that's going to then give you no benefit from that. You're trying to launch off the line. Let's say, you, let's say there's not an accident in the first five laps. You've got to launch off the line. You've got to pass the two cars that are ahead of you within a very short space of time. And then you've got to try and build a lead over those cars. Right. So in building a lead over those cars, you've got to put the hammer down. You're doing so in a heavy car, the heaviest it's going to be in that race. That is going to increase tyre wear. And this is the key thing. In a Grand Prix, the greater factor is the weight of the car. Understand this. Understand it. And the reason being, we're seeing... The fastest lap of the race, and it, it wasn't didn't happen in this race because late on, Daniel Ricciardo in the B team was able to pit for fresh soft tyres uh, to steal that fastest lap point. Even though it was going to be of no benefit to himself, he stole it away from Lando Norris using the B team to take points away from the A team's rivals. That is what has happened. You can argue it whichever way you want. Factually, that is the net result of what has taken place. OK, that has happened. So. That took place in this race, but what we are seeing in many races is the fastest lap of the race is being set late on in the race on used tyres. OK, 
And with that being the case, what is causing that fast lap? Well, it's not the state of the tyres, is it? It's not the tyre grip. If cars can set the fastest lap of the race when they're on tyres which are 10, 15, 20 laps old, then we're not seeing a degradation curve of a tyre which would be in any way uh, linear. You put the tyres on, you've got the maximum amount of grip, and after their lifespan, you've got no grip. And it's a straight line from top to bottom saying this is the decreasing level of grip that you've got. It doesn't work like that. The bigger factor, okay, is the weight of the car. The heavier it is, the slower you're going to go. You're not going to be able to corner as fast. It's not going to be able to accelerate as fast. It's not going to be able to brake as fast. Okay, as it gets lighter, everything becomes a bit more reactive, responsive. You put in less wear through those tyres because the mass, the, 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 the forces that are, are acting on those tyres, the lateral forces as you're cornering are less. And therefore, the tyres are going to scrub less. So the bigger factor is weight. If you're putting soft tyres on a heavy car, well, you're going to scrub them tyres very, very quickly. If you're pushing, if you intend to take the lead of the race and maintain the lead of the race, you've got to push. So you're setting yourself up to have to push from the start to then try and extend a lead to try and get some sort of a, a lead and then pit early, earlier than everybody else around you. And by doing so, you're going to come back out into that field in traffic, which is going to hold you up. Going to hold you up. That's what happens. That's what did happen. That's a known thing. I'm going to see if I can show you something that you actually need to get your head around as well. Oh, and again, just just listen to this. About to see well over 19,000 horsepower unleashed uh, with a short run down to what's a reasonably fast first corner in terms of it's not a heavy braking zone. 197 metres and on the right hand side, uh, the odd numbers, you get an advantage. That's the racing line. You get better grip off the line. So we'll see if that counts or anything in a few seconds when the lights go out. So on the right hand side, the racing line, you get better grip. So we'll see if that counts for anything. <laughs> so you're already, Lewis, you're already on the better racing line anyway by being in third on that side of the track. Um, yeah, yeah. But we still need to start you on soft and keep George, who's not on that side of the track, we'll keep him on the mediums. You know, but them softs aren't going to be of better benefit to George. We'll let you have the soft, medium, soft tyres there, Lewis. Yeah, yeah. You qualified ahead of George, which we didn't like. Um, so now we're going to novel your strategy to get George ahead of you. Anyway, I'll try and show you the bit that I'm intending to show you. Well, I was going to try and make this video quick, but actually you need to hear this. So I'm going to play this through. This is last year's Singapore Grand Prix. And just, well, we'll talk through it. I'm going to demonstrate a couple of things with this bit of footage, but you just need to hear the commentary and you need to hear the drivers. You need to understand the personalities involved. Here we go. The lights go out. 19 cars ready to race. It's lights out and away we go. And George Russell pointing towards Carlos Sainz, but he's already away. And Charles Leclerc is alongside George Russell too. And Ferrari, one, two, going into the first corner. And Lewis Hamilton has to take to the runoff because there was no room for him whatsoever. They streamed through the first three corners. Carlos Sainz getting the jump. Lewis Hamilton putting his teammate under pressure. George Russell losing a bit of pace behind the Ferraris at the start here as we go round turn five and on board. If I was Lewis, I'd let his teammate pass, otherwise the stewards are going to be looking at gaining an advantage. He is past. Hamilton is ahead of George Russell. Into the next corner we go, down the inside. Goes Kevin Magnussen in the house, trying to make a move on Esteban Ocon. Hamilton is ahead of George Russell. Lando Norris then, just ahead of Fernando Alonso. Who if you actually go back and watch this, um, Lewis Hamilton went off track, avoided an incident, uh, did what was necessary, rejoined the track places. Uh, you might see Max Verstappen doing that at a few Grand Prix since. Uh, yeah, first lap incident, no further action required when it involves a Red Bull car. Um, but here, um, it, it wasn't it wasn't uh, Red Bull that were complaining. It wasn't Red Bull that were complaining about Lewis Hamilton. 
has got the jump on the Haas car of Kevin Magnussen. Yeah, Russell's on the radio saying, you've got to let me pass because... Russell is on the radio. Oh, Russell's thrown his teddy bear out the pram because his teammate has overtaken him. He passed me off the track, and I think that would be smarter Mercedes-Benz to do that. But we've learned from some other races, sometimes it's better to take a five-second penalty and just get on down the road. What about the stewards? Sometimes say, oh, it's a first lap incident, and he was avoiding a collision, and he did the right things. Here's the radio. So you're going to let me back pass, or...? George Russell, this is the man that you are, the so-called man that you are. You're just a little bitch. If they go off onto that runoff area, the driver's obliged to go to the right of the bollard that is right at the end of that runoff area. If Lewis Hamilton did that, then maybe technically he doesn't need to let his teammate pass. Nobody gained places. Off. No, technically he doesn't need to. But Martin. Off the track. Anyway, we'll keep... Oh, but he gained places off the track, but he was avoiding an incident on the first on the first lap where all these cars converge in on a small pit, section of track. So you've avoided the collision. That's and as long as you then rejoin the track in a safe manner, then that's fine. Keep an eye on that and focus on the race. Alonso did indeed get past Kevin Magnussen, as did Esteban Ocon. Right. This is the first uh, situation that you need to be aware of. At turn 18, this is the entrance to the pits. You've got the pit lane starting from about there. Now, if we look at the time here, the time is uh, 10 minutes, 30 seconds. So there's a timestamp. When you remain on track, the time it takes you to go from the pit entrance to the pit exit is approximately 12 seconds. So let's play this through. And that's key for Fernando Alonso, key for Carlos Sainz that he's kept uh, all the drivers at bay and it's his teammate uh, right behind him. We've got a yellow flag being thrown in sector three and it's Yuki Tsunoda at turn 14. OK, so where Sainz is now is where the pit exit is, where that uh, pit exit lane uh, re resumes the track. And I'm probably a little bit slow there. 10.43. Remember, the pit entrance was 10.30. I've stopped it now at 10.43. When I've stopped this previously, it's been at 10.42. Approximately 12 seconds to go from that point to that point by remaining on the track. So there's a, an early pit stop in this race, and I'm going to show you through that, and I'm going to demonstrate to you how much time you lose. Remember, if you were on track, that amount of track is 12 seconds approximately, but we're going to have a listen to what's being said as well. And then it's stopped uh, just momentarily. He's got going again. Sonoda right at the back of the pile. As we complete the first lap, 1.2 seconds, the advantage that Science has. And remember what I was saying about uh, the, the natural spread of cars. Let's uh, just have a quick look at data view. Sonoda, my... We've done one lap. Okay. We've done one lap of the race and the leader is there. The gap between the leader and the last remaining competitor, 12 seconds. So already in the space of one lap, you're 12 seconds behind the leader, just in natural spread. And this is with gaps of a half a second to a second between each car. They're all bunched, but you're now 12 seconds behind the leader. So if you pit early and come out at the back of that pack, you're at least 12 seconds behind the leader. You're ruining your chances. You've got to get that time back. And you're going to be hindered in getting that time back because you're going to be held up by them cars ahead of you. Track position is king. It really is. Anyway. We'll go back to track of you and you can have a listen. And I think Sonoda might still be stationary down at turn 14, which if he is, that could bring out an early safety car here. Could well do. I think it'll be difficult. We'll, we'll try and see the car, but where it's showing up on the driver tracker, it'll be, uh, no, it looks like he's got away then with the green flag out, but the car's still showing stationary. It's going yellow, green, yellow, green, but Sonoda, uh, to our knowledge, is not moving in that Alpha Tauri. 
Positions gained and lost. Leclerc and Hamilton making up places. Alonso and Ocon making up places. And there is Yuki Tsunoda out of this race. And for a man who didn't even get to start in Monza two weeks ago, he hasn't even completed one lap here. But where is his car? I think his car is behind the barriers. It, it stopped, but it is behind the barriers, Marks. I just caught a brief glimpse of the Alpha Terry, yeah. so we should be OK to carry on racing which is a relief and George Russell has passed Lewis Hamilton while we've been focusing on Yuki Tsunoda the Mercedes have swapped places and Hamilton now has Lando Norris right behind him as they zoom along the Espelar bridge down towards turn 14 where Yuki Tsunoda's race ended a few moments ago so we're down to just 18 runners then a long way to go this evening and we're really set fair I'm imagining that quite early on, and it'll help Leclerc too, Carlos Sainz will want to manage the pace, manage his tyres, and only... Oh, so quite early on, we'd like to manage our tyres, would we? Rather than be trying to trash our tyres by trying to lap hard and get a lead early on. Is that is that what we tend to do in Grand Prix? When you're on a full fuel load... Yeah, we're, we're managing at this stage, aren't we? Yeah, when you're carrying an extra 100 kilograms in that car, you're doing managing. You're not throwing that car around trying to set as fast a laps as you can because, no, that heavy fuel load is going to impact that, isn't it? Yes. Pull the trigger a little bit later on when he wants to build a pit stop gap. So to the end... Pull the trigger a bit later on, but you've got to manage these. When are you going to pull, pull the trigger on those soft compound tyres? Oh, when they're worn out. Right, OK, thanks for that. So you've got to manage them, so you've got to go slower than you're capable of. And you've got to, you've got to manage them. You've got to treat them with oven gloves. You've got to manage them even more than you've got to manage medium tyres because they're more delicate than medium tyres. Strange that, isn't it? Right, so what we're seeing now, we are seeing uh, Joe approximately at pit entrance now you can listen to what's being said i probably stopped it a second too early maybe a second or two 12 23 probably a second or two early wait there oh, lap three. that there is about the entrance to the pits for joe and he is about to now enter the pits so we'll have a look at this 12 24 is the timestamp here 12.24. So let's see what time he emerges on track. Um, and let's zoom in on this. Um, so you can all see. Not doing a good job of this. Here we go. Let's try this. Three we go. Uh, and starting lap three, I should say. Carlos Sainz leading. Uh, Lewis needs to give the position back. Lewis needs to give the position back. Lando Norris. Being a little bitch. Yeah, he we're just on. breaks way too late. He committed to it, so he needs to give two positions back. Oh, he needs to give two positions back, does he? Because he committed to it. I just don't like We've already raised it with the race director. Yes, yeah, but they're going to do it for, for George. Oh, they have to do it but for he George. Just committed to it. Oh, oh, Lando's concerned about George's chances. That's very noble of you there, Lando. To going off, so of course he can break a lot later than me, you know. Lewis committed to go off. That's why, uh, of course, he can break a lot later. No, was Lewis reacting to what was happening around him? Or did he decide when st sat on that grid that I'm going to just not even bother to go around that first corner. I'm just going to drive off the track. He committed to doing that, did he, Lando? No. No, he saw what was going on around him, responded to that and did the safest thing. Complied with the regulations, did what he needed to do in terms of rejoining the track in the correct manner. Whilst you bitches were bitching around. Yeah, that's what was happening. And those of you that might be offended by the term bitch. OK, the, the term bitch is to used as a female dog. OK, not a female human. OK, a female dog. It's used as a derogatory term for somebody who likes to whine about things. Yes, that's the term that I'm using. Somebody who likes to whine about things, to bitch about things. That's what these people are. Has he got a point, Martin? Uh, he has, yeah. I mean, but actually... Yes, I'm glad that you agree with me. See, I don't think it was necessarily that. It was more that as the, uh, an early pit stop 
for Alfa Romeo, uh, trying to sneak a point at the end of the Grand Prix somehow. Yeah, but that is a strategic move by Alfa Romeo. Yeah. They've got rid of the softs on... Oh, it's a strategic move by Alfa Romeo, trying to sneak a point at the end of the Grand Prix. OK, so they started. We'll have a look in the strategy at a minute. Joe is now back on track after his pit stop. Uh, it was 24 when he went in. It's now 06. That is 42 seconds difference. Yeah, 24 through to a minute is, I think it's 24, um, is 36 seconds. Add six, 42 seconds. So to go from pit entrance to pit exit takes 42 seconds when you change your tyres. If you remain on track, it takes 12 seconds. The difference is 30 seconds. What we're actually told is the average time is 28 seconds lost through pitting to change tyres. So every time you change tyres in a Grand Prix, in the Singapore Grand Prix, you add 28 seconds onto your race time because that is the time that it takes you additional to what it would otherwise take you. So you have to decide, is by being gone a different tyre going to gain you 28 seconds and more? Are you going, and this is, this is the key, 62 laps, let's say you divide 62 laps into three. So you've got three e relatively even segments of that race, 21 laps each. If over the course of 21 laps, you are on tyres that you can push harder on, are you able to push so that in that sector, in those 21 laps, you can make 28 seconds up and more on those cars around you by being on better tyres, okay, that, enable, that is worth you to put in that extra stop in. These are all factors that you need to consider. And if you're not able to push that's going to enable you to, main, to, to gain that 28 seconds by being on the better tyres, well, you're better off conserving the tyres, aren't you? You're better off not committing to knowing you're going to lose 28 seconds and having to push to try and get that, them 28 seconds back or build them 28 seconds up before you know you're going to throw them away. And then if there is a safety car incident, other teams don't lose the full 28 seconds because the 12 seconds it takes you when you're remaining on track. Well, actually, they that, that's probably 20 seconds when you're going behind the safety car because the safety car is a lot slower. So whilst you pitting will still take those 28 seconds, those people on track aren't covering that distance. Sorry. When you're pitting, it will take you 40 seconds from pit entrance to pit exit. Those people on track aren't covering that same distance in the 12 seconds. It's taking them 20 seconds. So relative to them, you're not losing 28 seconds. You're only losing 20 seconds, for example. So whatever your strategy is, you've got to consider all of these factors. All of these factors. Now, let's have a quick look at data view. After just over two laps, we know Joe has, has uh, pitted. He's now 41 seconds behind the lead. Bottas is now 13 seconds behind. 13 seconds behind the leader after just two laps, just due to field spread. Bottas, when he's in his qualifying time, he's not six and a half seconds a lap slower than science, is he? No. But he can't go at the same speed as science because his race is impacted by all of the cars that are in front of him. And his pace is dictated by that. And after two laps, he's that far behind. And that gap keeps extending. And you can't, like I say, just keep scything your way through the field. We've, we understand the notion now of this idea of DRS trains, whereby it's difficult to overtake, even with the aid of DRS, because the car in front of you has also got DRS. So it's able to go fast down the straights as well. So it's not straightforward. It really isn't. Who has started on soft compound tyres in this race? Leclerc and Sainz. OK, what can we learn from the 2023 Singapore Grand Prix? 
let's have a look. So fast forward through to lap 20. You know, who started on the soft compound of tyre? We've got Charles Leclerc up here, soft compound tyre. There he is, started in third, moved up to second place. All right, behind his teammate. Russell, oh, Russell's lost a place again because uh, Russell wasn't capable of, um, of maintaining this position. Uh, he had to bitch on the radio to have places handed back to him. Um, so, yeah. That's what's happened with uh, Russell. Um, who else? We've got this one down here. Joe, he started on the soft compound attire. He's gone on this backmarker's strategy, the gamble, trying to steal a point at the end of the race. Martin Brundle told you that's what he's trying to do. And the other one was Sonoda, who's out the race, so we can't even use that as any kind of an analytical kind of uh, device. So what's going to happen is... Uh, We've got a car that's on soft compound tyres and their teammate is on medium compound tyres. We're on, well, they're, they're both 19 lap old tyres at the moment. But Leclerc in second place is 8.3 seconds behind. The car on mediums in the lead is faster. Yeah, by 8.3 seconds after 20 laps. What does that show you? Oh, Leclerc's a slower driver. Is he? Is he really? Or is it that over the course of 20 laps, he's 8.3 seconds slower? Why is that? Oh, the softs is the faster tyre. Oh, no, that's not what it is. Oh, he's in dirty air. No, 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 there's not dirty air when you're eight seconds behind. Right? It's because he's having to conserve his tyres. That's what he's having to do. If he got that much extra grip and he was on that much of a faster tyre, surely overtaking his teammate and going out into the lead would be the thing to do. No, it doesn't work like that, does it? So the guy on the mediums has got an eight second lead. What's that per lap? Well, it's about a third of a second per lap, isn't it? It's about a third of a second per lap. Sites is faster by being on the medium tyre. And now what do we see? We'll have a, have a bit of a play things through. Um, I think Logan Sargent has uh, got an issue and so therefore they throw the safety car. Let's have a look what happens. A watching brief. I think Ferrari have most to lose in this, but they are out in the pit lane ready for, I assume, Sites. Here they come then. You've got a bit, haven't you? You halved the cost of a pit stop and they can get onto the hard tyres and probably get to the end from here. So you can get on the hard tyres and maybe get to the end from here. Right. Is this everybody trying to do that? Yeah. Just everybody using the safety car at this point in time to get onto the hard tyre. Yeah. So it's only if everybody does it that you're not disadvantaging yourself. If you're doing it yourself, you're the one that comes back out into traffic. But when everybody does it, then it's the same situation for everybody. If you're on a medium tyre, now's a good time to pit. If you're on a soft tyre, it could be a good time to pit. But can they double stack? If you're on a medium tyre, it's a good time to pit. If you're on a soft tyre, it might be also a good time to pit. Thanks for that, Crofty. Down at Ferrari, Russell is definitely coming. What about if you're on a hard tyre, Crofty? I mean, Max Verstappen's on the hard tyre. He's in eighth. What's going to happen now? In as well, and Charles Leclerc is coming in. They are double stacking at Ferrari. Expect Norris to come into the pits. Hard tyre is going on. Max Verstappen just making his way around the final corner now. Can they get Charles Leclerc out, Martin, and, uh, and not be delayed? Here comes Lewis Hamilton. Oh, Max Verstappen's in second. And why is that? Because he was able to stay out. Track position being king. Yeah? He's on tyres that last a long period of time. And therefore, he stayed out and gained positions by the others pitting. Oh, how else would he have got them places? Hmm, I wonder. I wonder. Let's learn from history, shall we? Now, Charles Leclerc was in second position. What, let's see what happens to Charles Leclerc. 
Hamilton, they've had to hold Charles Leclerc till it's clear to get out. He overplayed holding the pack up with a double stack. He needs to be careful he doesn't get a penalty for that. But he overplayed that and put himself at risk. I think he's got away with it. Carlos Sainz. So, Leclerc drops from second to sixth, right? Through the Ferrari strategy. Okay, through what Ferrari did, you can say it's strategy. You can say that uh, it was Charles Leclerc's fault. You can say it's Ferrari's fault through not advising him through the best way of doing the double stack. Okay, there is there is a fault there with the notion of a safety incident has taken place. The teams have jumped on the idea and utilised that to make their pit stops. And in doing so, that has cost Charles Leclerc time in this race. Now, somebody, I want you to forward this to Felipe Massa's lawyers, OK? Give, this is what they're going to use to fight Massa's case for Crashgate 2008 to try and rip the 2008 World Championship from Lewis Hamilton, all right? There's a safety incident in a race and Ferrari, their pit crew, they've done something that has impacted Massa's race. And now Massa's lawyers want that race it just wiping from history. They'll say, and, Ber and, and Bernie Eccleston as well, he'll now say, oh yeah, we should have wiped that race out altogether because Felipe had his chances ruined in that race due to a safety incident. So we'll get rid of... Of that, shall we? Should we get rid of the 2023 Singapore Grand Prix? Because uh, there was a safety incident and the FIA deployed the safety car and that impacted Charles Leclerc's race. Yet what was done there between Ferrari and Leclerc, uh, that cost Leclerc time and that dropped him down from second down to sixth. Yeah, that was that take took him from 18 points down to eight points. That lost him 10 points just in that manoeuvre there, didn't it? You know, and, and because of that, Leclerc will lose his head and drive like a see you next Tuesday for the rest of the race. You know, this is this is what happens, isn't it? Massa's lawyers, let me know what you think in the comments section, dickheads. Anyway, um, what then happens later on in this race? Well, we end up with Carlos Sainz winning the race, having started on the medium compound tyre, having changed under safety car onto the hard compound tyre on lap 20 and done 42 laps on the hard compound tyre. Wins that race by 0.8 of a second. Norris in second. Up, gains two places. OK, started on the medium tyre, changed under safety car onto hards. Does 42 laps on hard compound tyres. Right? Finishes. They, they would have ideally run longer on those medium compound tyres. They would have ideally run longer. They used that safety car to actually make that change because the time lost under safety car would be better. Right? It's better to say rather than... If we, relative to everybody else, lose 20 seconds by pitting under a safety car, as opposed to losing 28 seconds when we're pitting not under safety car, then we'll rather pit under safety car, lose eight seconds less, right? And then, and the other thing is, relative to everybody else, you're all bunched up anyway. So you're starting from a zero position. So effectively, you're losing nothing. I, I, and you're given a free start again. Hamilton. Well, what did they do? They pitted him under safety car under hards. They pitted him onto mediums again. OK. And Hamilton has finished third. Who was the fast guy? Who's the one that then lost time here as well? Who's the, the guy that lost time here and finished third? And um, ended up 0.4 of a second behind Norris. What was that all about? Go back and have a look. And then Leclerc, whose race was ruined by, you know, a safety car being deployed earlier on in the race, dropped him from second down to sixth. And then he lost his mind and couldn't drive for the rest of the race. Oh, well, no, he could. Um, he finished fourth. Verstappen. OK, 
Verstappen jumped on, well, no, kept going on the hards, did his one stop onto mediums, hung out them hards to almost lap 40, and then went on to mediums and ended up finishing in fifth position. A gain of six places. Strange that. See what happens with the older strategies from last year. Look at history. And let's listen to what they were saying. This is my first smooth operation in Ferrari. Smooth operator. <laughs> what I loved about that was the brilliant teamwork between Sainz and Norris, and they're not even in the same team. What Martin likes about that is the brilliant teamwork between Sainz and Norris. What was the brilliant teamwork between Sainz and Norris? Not in the same team. What was that teamwork all about? Logan Sargent trying to hold off Fernando Alonso, who's still giving it everything to race. No, no, it wasn't Logan Sargent and Fernando Alonso. To the line, Magnussen did get into the points. Albon. The brilliant teamwork was Sainz giving Norris DRS so that Hamilton couldn't overtake Norris. There's your brilliant teamwork. All seems to be stacked against one guy, doesn't it? Why is that? Why is that? Because I didn't see a brilliant teamwork ganging up against Max Verstappen. Oh, no, no, Max Verstappen's not our race. You know, we're not going to work as a team to keep him behind us. No, no, we'll just roll out the red carpet for Max. Oh, it's Lewis, though. Two drivers from opposing teams work together to keep Lewis behind them. And Martin Brundle describes that as brilliant teamwork, even though they're not from the same team. Strange dynamics in this show of Formula One, isn't it? Strange dynamics as to what we're seeing here. So that was last year. And we're learning from last year. This year, we are starting the 2024 Singapore Grand Prix. And what do we get? We get a car that's qualified in third position, running a strategy, which is the gamble strategy to try and pinch a point. Well, did they pinch a point? Uh, Joe, let's have a look what Joe did. Joe started on the softs. And switched on to hards and tried to pinch a point. Well, actually, no, it didn't work. And the reason it didn't work is because when it got to the safety car incident on lap 20, he then changed on to mediums because everybody else had the chance of changing then as well. Oh, because, oh, there might be a safety car at any point in this race. And then everybody can do that. So you losing track position early on doesn't actually help you, does it? No. So he finished 12th. Zero points. Zero points. So what has that done? Oh, but he's moved up seven positions. Right, OK. And that was because of that strategy, was it? Hmm. No, that wasn't the reason. Wasn't the reason. So, again, who didn't pit under that safety car? Oh, the person on hards. The person that went longer into that race. And what happens, actually? The longer you run, well, what you're doing, you are... As those around you are pitting, you're gaining places. You start the race on hard tyres and you can run for 40 laps. If those on mediums are pitting after 30 laps, then when they go into the pits, as long as you're not too disadvantaged and don't lose too much time to them, when they're in the pits, you overtake them. By remaining on track, you overtake them. And those in those then 10 laps that are between them pitting on lap 30 and you pitting on lap 40, if there's then a safety car incident because of, of a car crashing or for whatever it might be, you can take your pit stop then. You don't lose that time. You might have the chance of coming back out on track ahead of them. By running longer, you're running longer into that race. And if a safety incident does take place, you can then take advantage of it. If you've already thrown that option away by pitting early, then you've not got anything to gain, have you? You're not gaining it. You've already, you're giving yourself the option by starting on the hard tyre. Look at what Red Bull did. Perez started on the hard tyre, ran the hard tyre along. Had there been a safety car incident at lap 30, everybody would have pitted. The medium compounder tyre would have pitted. The soft compounder tyre would have pitted. 
had this safety car incident have been back here in lap 10, the Red Bulls would have kept going, wouldn't they? These mediums and soft would have been tempted to pit. The Red Bulls would have got track position. Then we'd have done a tyre change here. And these, these competitors that have changed onto tyres, well, they're nursing their tyres. They might need a second stop by then. The Red Bulls can hang it out to the end of the race. Oh, clever strategy here. Clever strategy. So, let's go through the options again. Because Colin in the comments section doesn't get it. The strategy, contrary to the belief that it was designed to screw Hamilton, was actually completely sound. Prior to 2024, there had been a safety car deployed in Singapore at every race, with the deployment averaging, I know you love an average, on lap 14. Relatively early for a 62 lap race. See this guy projecting as if he's got some sort of fucking knowledge. Right. This is the guy that projects that he was somehow involved in Formula One at Abu Dhabi 2021. Can't tell us, right? Can't tell us his involvement because otherwise he'd have to kill us, right? Um, but thinks he knows about... Oh, on average, there's a safety car deployed at lap 14. I know, I know, I know about Formula One. Um, are you still involved in the sport of Formula One? There might be a reason why you're no longer involved in the sport of Formula One. Let me know what you think that is in the comments section. So, putting on a scrub set of softs for the early race and hoping for a safety car really wasn't a bad move in theory. Hindsight is twenty twenty, however. Gambling on this strategy that Lewis would also have agreed with doesn't make Toto involved in fraud, spot fixing or, to address a later point, is involved with some Jeffrey Epstein character, which is just disgusting. Indeed, yes, Jeffrey Epstein is disgusting. But that went on. That went on. That man arranged for high-powered people to have sex with young people. High-powered, wealthy people. And then, because he got evidence of that, he got leverage over them. And he would then potentially be able to blackmail them, giving him control. I'm exposing the dynamics of certain situations. There are people willing to utilise their money to do dirty deeds, to fulfil their desires. And then there are people that can have leverage over these people. These are all parts of the dynamics that I'm exposing on this channel and what I'm trying to do to get people to start thinking about the reality of the bigger picture of this world. But rather than do that, you'll be offended. You'll be offended with everything that I say because you'll choose to take offence with everything that I say. But anyway, let's refer back to the strategy because this is the important thing. Because you don't think... We're sharing your uh, valuable insight in the comments section that on average there's a safety car deployment on lap 14. OK, so on average, well, we've gone through. Let's go through the first five, first laps zero to um, ten. If there's a safety car incident or a red flag between lap the start of the race and lap 10, then what? Well, you pit. Some people will pit. Some people won't pit. If you're one of the ones that do, you're going to lose track position. The field spread at that stage in the first 10 laps, 20 seconds, might even be 28 seconds. You're going to lose that. You're going to come out after pitting at the back of the pack. The pack is going to be bunched. But when the race gets going again, then that field spread is going to straight away be after the first lap, 12 seconds. So you're 12 seconds down on the leader. Yes, you might be on fresh tyres, but that 12 seconds is going to gain and gain and gain. And you've got to try and side your way through the field. That takes time. You're losing out. OK, so you have to pit early. You lose time. The field spread is going to make you lose a lot of time on the lead cars. So you don't want to end up pitting and coming back out into traffic. The field spread is going to hinder your race. A red flag would be the same conditions for everybody. Everybody can change their tyres. So starting on the soft tyres doesn't help you in that regard. And like I say, we know what the FIA do. If they can, any gains that you make 
they will throw the red flag at a time that they want to throw it. They will tell you, oh, we've not gone through enough time in sectors and therefore any gains that you've made, well, they don't count. We're going to restart the grid from the original starting grid. Despite you jumping them at the first lap, Lewis, that doesn't count. You still got to start back in third again. We know what they do. We've seen it happen time and time again. You're now going on to lap 15. OK, so we knew from the previous year that Charles Leclerc hung those tyres out for 20 laps. But in doing so, he had to conserve those tyres and lost eight, eight and a half seconds on his teammate who was on the mediums. So already he's having to conserve tyres and lose time. Well, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage, aren't you? You're losing eight seconds. Where are you going to gain them eight seconds back? Where are you gaining them eight seconds? Because you both cars are going to have to pit. Now you, you, you're pitting early and therefore it means you've got to hang out those hard tyres for the remainder of those race, the, the race, meaning you have to conserve them, which means you can't push as hard. The person on the mediums can carry on driving on those mediums and then when they put the hard tyres on some 10 laps later well they don't have to worry about burning those tyres out before the end of the race so they can push leaving you as a sitting look later on in that race leaving you having to try and conserve your tyre wear as the weight of that car is going down as the car is getting lighter as everybody is getting faster well you're still having to battle to conserve your tyres that have gone on early and you're having to make them last. And you think that actually, oh, this is a good strategy. It would have worked. OK, if it's a safety car at lap 15, how does that benefit Hamilton? Well, he started the race, wasn't able to make positions. OK, if he had have been able to make positions, then what? Well, we've seen from the previous year that Charles Leclerc in second, well, he lost eight and a bit seconds on his teammate that was on the mediums because he was having to conserve. So you can't have use them soft tyres to go and build you a lead. If there's a 15, sorry, if there's a safety car after lap 15, well, all of them gaps are going to be wiped out anyway, right? So even if you are in the lead, then you lose time to everybody else. So that gap any advantage you build up by pushing on those soft compound tyres is wiped out by the safety car. If you've had to conserve, you've lost time, but that's wiped out by the safety car. You pit from, let's say, let's say they've got past Max Verstappen, but not Norris at the start. Safety car at lap 15. They all pit to change onto tyres. Well, they've all done it. They've all changed onto hards and hanging out hards for the rest of the race. Aren't they? Well, yeah, they are. They're hanging out the hard tyre for the rest of the race. They've all done the same thing. So what have you gained? Well, you've gained one position in, in passing Max Verstappen, but then you've got to defend him off for the rest of the race. Do you think that's? Do you think that, that was the strategy that Mercedes were on? But you've got to then believe that Hamilton would have been able to defend. He'd have been able to overtake Max Verstappen on the first lap on those soft compound tyres and be able to defend for 15 laps that Max Verstappen being able to push harder on the medium tyres, rather than Lewis Hamilton conserving those tyres for 15 laps, that Lewis would have been able to maintain track position. Where's the evidence that that was possible? So you're not thinking through, are you? You're not thinking through all the various different options. You put him on medium tyres, you put him on the same strategy as everybody else. You can react in the same way as everybody else. You're not dictated to have to pit early by putting yourself on soft tyres, on tyres that are going to wear out before everybody else is. You do that, you have to pit earlier than them. And by doing so, if there is a safety car later on, well, you've already thrown that away. You've already lost 28 seconds of race time by already having to pit. And they're staying out on track. And if a safety incident then occurs and they can get a cheap safety car, well, you've lost time. You've lost that and you've lost track position. Lose. So you put yourself in that position by not being able to run long in that first stint. You've thrown away that. For what gain? That gain, any gain that you would make, would be negated by a safety car situation anyway. 
What are you gaining? What are you gaining? You're gambling that there is a safety car on average on lap 14. Did we get a safety car on average on lap 14? No, we didn't. Why didn't we? Well, there's less of a chance in this year's race because they've changed the circuit from the previous races where you're taking your average from. So the likelihood of a safety car is decreased. The notion of an average of it, an average safety car being deployed on an average lap is a ridiculous average. You don't understand what constitutes a usable average and what is a stupid average. OK, the average favourite colour of people is green. Yeah, because that's a useful average, isn't it? Yeah. On average, people's favourite colour is green, like a Kermit, like a frog. No, Kermit. No, doesn't work like that. If you're going to split your strategies, you have one on mediums and one on hards. And what you do is if there is a relatively early safety car within the first 20 laps and everybody in that top running order pits to change tyres for the one stop. OK, then what you do, you have the medium tyre runner that pits in accordance with everybody else and you have the hard compound tyre stay out on track so if you get a safety car at average of lap 14 okay the medium compound tower runner pits at the same time as everybody else so lando goes in max goes in let's say it's lewis was on the medium compound tire he goes in fine all right but whoever's on the hard compound tire they stay out they take the lead of the race they've gained places haven't they They've gained places. And then when that race restarts, they have got to drive like hell on those tyres to try and remain in the lead. And the natural field spread is going to cause that field to string out. And then let's say 20 laps later, there's a safety incident. Now's your time to pit, isn't there? Now's your time to pit. Everybody else is thinking, oh, uh, yeah, what do we do now? Shall we pit again? Well, if you're in the lead of that race, you pit, they pit, you come out in the lead again. So you've got the lead of the race. You're on the same tyres as everybody else now. Now you've gone from mediums to hard. Sorry, you've, if, if you started on hard and you've run a long period of time into that race, you've only got to hang out those mediums. For a shorter period in that race, you start on mediums. You can't hang that out for as long as possible to give yourself all of those options. Then hard compound tires give you lots of options in that regard. If you start on hard compound tires and there's a safety car incident in lap 10, then you've got to then decide, am I going to change onto mediums and try and hang those mediums out for 50 yard laps? Whereas if you start on mediums and change up lap 10, can you hang the hard compound tyres out for 50 odd laps? Yeah, there's a chance of doing that, but you don't want to hang the medium tyres out for 50 odd laps. That's not saying it's not possible, because if you see Oscar Piastri do 39 laps on a set of medium tyres, but those 39 laps were the 39 laps where he was carrying the heaviest fuel load from the start. Whereas actually you start that, 10 laps later, well, are those are those 39 laps? Are you able to do a few more laps when you're carrying less load? There's so many factors involved in this. And without all the data, I can't give you accurate, definitive answers. There's, there's so much. But you're 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 led to believe that, oh, you can make these decisions without us having the data. We can't do this. A lot of this is a facade anyway. The emphasis on tyres is a facade. Understand that. We are led to believe things. Oh, the tyres are going to drop off a cliff and the people, are, you know, oh, but then we get George Russell in Spa, right? Oh, but is he going to be able to keep Lewis behind him on those tyres in the last six laps of this race? Oh, hang on to the edge of your seat. Every well, yeah, but he did, didn't he? So the tyres weren't really the problem. What was the major issue there? Well, that was the weight of the car, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the weight of the car. 
being the bigger factor that enabled him to drive fast. Wasn't the tyres, was it? Wasn't the relative grip due to the age of the tyres? No, but what we do know is the weight of the car will add to the scrubbing of those tyres and will decrease the lifespan of those tyres. If you start pushing that car and scrubbing those tyres when that car is heavy, that will happen. That will happen. We know that from the real world driving experience that we all have. There is not a single form of strategy where that soft compound tyre makes sense. The only thing that you'd do is if you started towards the back of the grid, okay, you might try to use it on the grounds of seeing if you can use it to make up a few spaces, pit early, and then try to get onto a different set of different tyre compound and drive in um, clean air and effectively get yourself out of the traffic, be able to lap where your lap pace isn't hindered by those cars around you and gain enough time on everybody else so that when it comes to the time that they pit, you have jumped them through being able to drive in a, we'll call it clean air, but a unhindered position around that track where your lap time is not dictated by the cars around you and that enables you to jump places. But the trouble in doing that is that natural field spread already puts you so far behind the leaders. So you're not able to fight with the lead cars now because they've already driven too far away from you. You're only making ground relative to those cars that were in a similar location to you at the point, the time you, in, you uh, began that strategy. So it's worth doing if you're in the bottom half of that field. But in the top half, You've got to fight with those cars around you. You can't run just a completely alternate strategy because you're going to get blocked. You're going to get hampered by the other cars that are in that midfield there. There's lots to unpack about this and there's lots of comments that I can go through um, where people just haven't got a clue. But again, this show doesn't, doesn't help you, doesn't explain things to you. But it makes you think you know what you're talking about. And people who don't know how to think, think they know how to think, think they're, in, they're intelligent. They think that they can come to the comment section and try and present themselves as having some sort of knowledge. And the reality is, the thick as pig shit. Thick as pig shit. Um, but, you know, some people, they probably like pig shit. Especially if you Kermit the Frog. You know, you might like pig shit. Anyway, that will do for this video. Uh, thank you all for your time. Cheers.